guys. We're back today. I'm sorry. As you can tell, I'm still feeling like ass. So if I have to blow my nose in the video, I apologize. I'm going to try to take the earbuds out before I do. And sorry if I cough because it's probably going to make that staticky noise when it gets too loud. And that's not pleasant for your ears. So I do apologize on that. Um, But with that being said... Um, I've been trying to, you know what I'm saying? I've been wanting to do this video for a while. And like I told y'all, I've been sick for two weeks and now it's two weeks, two days we're going on and ooh, excuse me, to explain to y'all how last night went, I took three melatonin gummies, two Benadryl, one melatonin pill. And then once I finally fell asleep, I woke up every one or two hours until about, I went to sleep around 8, 9, actually did pretty good going to sleep, or maybe 10. Went to sleep from, you know, woke up an hour, went back to sleep, woke up every two hours. Finally, by 2 o'clock, 1 o'clock, I was like, you know what, let me go take a shower and maybe loosen up some of this mucus. That did nothing. Ended up going back to sleep, waking up still every hour, two hours. And then finally by 6 o'clock, I was finally able to knock out. And of course, I didn't wake up to 12.40. So... <clears throat> That was fucking fun. But with that being said, I'm just, I'm going through it. This is the worst sickness I've ever, I've ever, this worst, the worst, literally the worst. With that being said, though, I've been wanting to do this video. As I was explaining to my mom, I've either been feeling worse or less worse. So with that being said, I was just like, you know what? I, let me do the video, try to get things off my, or get, keep off my mind of this sickness. And it's something I've been wanting to talk about. So with that being said, y'all can see the title is Ariana Grande. Per, uh, is Ariana Grande personified blackface, and where I'm gonna look at this from multiple angles, not just the whole skin tanning situation. Which, by the way, real quick, if any Italians could, and I need you to be honest, like I need you to be well rounded with your answer, not just situational, because I feel like with this situation. When we talk about race and stuff and cultural appropriation, a lot of people want to be situational with a situation. And that's like, like to give you an example of what I mean by that, they want to use the one out of 10 person, one out of 10th every person, like that statistic, when they say one out of 10 people, they want to use that one person to apply to the rest of the nine, but it doesn't. It says one out of every 10. So they want to use a rare case on a regular situation. That's not true. And that's not being honest. So with that being said, if anybody who is Italian down below could let me know real quick, is it natural for Italian people's skin to change that drastically? You know, I would say that Ariana, she doesn't look as black. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry, y'all. That was nasty. Give me one second. Ew. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm back. Um, and I want to say real quick, not black, but she doesn't look as quote-unquote blackfish, I guess, as those bitches who last year were blackfishing and shit and trying to claim that in Greece that's how people tan and da-da-da-da, this, any other. You know what I'm saying? And um, she doesn't look that dark, but she does look progressively darker. And I've been following Ariana Grande since Victoria's days. That was my shit. And... Like, she didn't just start being Italian two years ago. So, this whole skin thing that's going on, it honestly, to me, looks like she's tanning. Like, at face value, she looked like a white girl on Victorious. She did not look like an Italian, half Sicilian, half a bruise or a bruise descent. She doesn't look like that. She looks like a white girl. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She's one of those white ethnics. Like, at the end of the day, face value, they look white. You know what I'm saying? So let me know down below if anybody who is Italian can honestly tell me if that's just a one, a one out of every 10 situation or if that is overall majority how Italian people do tan over the years. Sorry, give me one moment. <clears throat> All right, I'm sorry. So coming back to this situation, um, if it would be helpful if you've seen the Seven Rings video. If you also look up the video of um, and this is the video's title, not my title. <laughs> Ariana Grande, quote unquote, thug moments. If you look that video up, it'll be helpful. Um, and also, if you go back and compare some of her interviews in the past to now her interviews, that would be helpful too. You can get the gist of where I'm going with this video. 
So with that being said, when I'm talking about personifying blackface, I'm talking about everything. Her interviews from there to now, the Seven Rings song, the concept of the song, the video of the song, um, her support of Miley and Justin, and I guess you could say Iggy too, since they did do a song together, and Iggy Azalea is pretty much the personification of blackface. <coughs> <coughs> um, the black scent situation that she's got going on. Um... And all, all that shit. So, with that being said, um, you can get all that from those videos. And I'm going to try to link them below if I can remember to. Y'all, my, I'm sick, so I ain't going to lie. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, I'm going to try to remember. But, um, you know what I'm saying? I've been sitting back watching everything, and I feel like people aren't being honest. You know, like I said earlier, they're taking that one out of every ten situation and a pl- person or situation and applying it to the common situation and that you can't do that that's not being honest that's not being accurate that's not at all accurate you know what i'm saying if one out of every 10 person has this sickness you can't then say everyone has this sickness it's just one out of every 10 you know what i'm saying like that's not being accurate that's not being honest you know what i'm saying so with that being said you can definitely tell that she's trying to embrace the quote-unquote edgy side and we all know what that means you know what i'm saying when a white person is trying to embrace their edginess you know what i'm saying and you know what i'm saying it's not to say that i'm surprised because i mean she's been in our respective spaces before she dated big sean for crying out loud you know what i'm saying um i don't really see the point in her team or her or whatever the situation i don't see the point in them trying to quote-unquote blackify her because it's Ariana Grande. Like, her fans ride or die for her. She can fart and clap on the beat, and, and they will, you know what I'm saying, buy it and stream it, like, twice over. Like, it's Ariana Grande. I don't see the point of her doing this. <coughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't know if she's trying to appeal to her, you know, urban demographic. I don't know what the fuck she's trying to do. It's obvious that something's going on there. You know what I'm saying? And the black fishing is not just in the te- the color change of her. But like I said, the black scent. Everything that's going on, she's giving me Miley Cyrus tease, and I'm not here for it. You know what I'm saying? We all know how that ended. She denounced her ghetto ratchetness, quote unquote. Even though she her, her sluttiness, her ratchetness and sluttiness was past anything I've seen. She has surpassed Little Kim, as far as I'm concerned. Like, If I'm not mistaken, she was on stage with dildo microphones and all this shit. Like... And, you know, that's the thing. When you're the little white girl, you can afford to do that shit. You know what I'm saying? Black women can't do that same thing. You know what I'm saying? Which is another issue that, you know what I'm saying, I had with the whole weave situation. You know, it's mine. I bought it. That was a little, you or gee, thanks, just bought it. The hair situation. I understand her and her ponytail. You know what I'm saying? I understand that. But that was a little off to me to hear that in a song from a little white girl. Even somebody who was white made that comment. If I'm not mistaken, let me try to find the video. <clears throat> I'm gonna link this one down below too. Okay, hopefully the YouTube don't try to block my video from that little one second audio, but you know YouTube. All right, let's see. Let me see. This was a video of Princess Nokia comparing the songs. Here, this person made the comment, and it looks like at least when they're pictured, they look white. So they said Ariana Grande is white. I live for her, but I did find it weird that she used the my hair I bought it line that's traditionally traditionally used by many black and brown women in music behind the trap beat. When they said that, that spoke volumes to me. I'm not even going to lie. Because before then, I was like, eh, maybe people are stretching. I'm never going to go after somebody who is a smaller channel or a smaller person, let's say, on the spectrum, (coughs) and say, or or food chain or whatever you want to call it, and say they're automatically lying. I wouldn't do that because I know how that feels. I actually talked about that in my intro that's coming up on my next mixtape, where... I felt like people, uh, both in the YouTube world and in the music world, have used things that I've done and taken from me and used it for their bigger audience. You know what I'm saying? And at the end of the day, that's the gut feeling that I have. I watch things. I have analytics. I see who watches my videos. So you can't tell me what I know because you don't know. You don't know who Ariana Grande listens to. You don't know who the writers on that song listen to because she has 10, 11 writers on there. And somebody did point out that some of the writers are black on that song. So they very well, even if she hasn't heard the song Mine by Princess Nokia, they very well could have. <coughs> She's an Afro-Latina woman. So it's very possible that they may have heard that song before. You know what I'm saying? Or Ariana herself could have heard it. I really don't like the, you know what I'm saying, tearing down of somebody who's just speaking their truth. I don't understand that. But with that being said, 
Um, and then this person went one step further because, you know, of course, everybody got mad. You know what I'm saying? And he said, LMAO, I got y'all mad, huh? Just listen to Princess Nokia's song, Mine, and it explains the stigma of hair with black and brown women. It's so much deeper than air, uh, quote-unquote extensions. I understand Areola was just referencing her outdated ponytail, but what does she know about bundles? That yakky, absolutely nothing. So to reference a line that's so casually about her, so casually about her dried extensions, that has historically meant something else is weird. I'm sorry, I don't have the range to unpack this. Whoop. And I'm not gonna lie, that that comment just kind of hit it home for me. So any doubt that I had, that I was like, you know, baby princess Nokia is reaching. As soon as they said that, you know, at the end of the day, it definitely hit. You know, and I like how he used the phrase, um, or that person, they, whoever the fuck use the phrase something to use something for her extensions. And I like the air quotes that he used because that also put it to test that white people love to take our shit and simplify it. You know, instead of weave is extensions. So it's okay if white women wear extensions. There's no fucking difference. You're adding hair to your hair. At the end of the day, it's all the same thing. Weave extensions, same shit. You know what I'm saying? But historically speaking, and I like how he pointed that out, you know what I'm saying? That has been a stigma and a problem for black and brown women. You know what I'm saying? And um, so I like how he, I do like how he pointed that out. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> and as far as my opinion is concerned, you know, with the sounds of music, that soundtrack for the layout of the song, I definitely would say that goes the best with the Seven Ring song. However, concept wise, and the vo even some of the vocal layers, the way the songs are mechanically made, I would say mine, I would say Princess Nokia, she she um, has the inkling of a clue of what she's talking about. I would say that much. That's just how I personally feel. You're free to disagree. You know what I'm saying? If y'all think Ariana just made this song on your own, you're free to you free to feel however you want. You know what I'm saying? Give me one second. You know what I'm saying? As far as the tr the flow is concerned, I will say that's a pretty generic flow. So I'll give people that. But everything else, I would say it's Princess Nokia. I'm not even going to lie. You know what I'm saying? Or some type of black culture thing that she has grasped from. You know, the, it didn't turn me, uh, went and turned me too savage or this, that, and the other, and this, that, and the third. And I don't see her as a savage. Even some people on the Thug Moments videos were saying, you know, maybe savage moments. And I was like, I don't even see these as savage. Like, you know what I'm saying? Some of them, and some of them, I would say she's being overly feministic or whatever. Like the whole makeup or phone discussion. And it's like, I get where she was coming from. But we, as from both sides of the genders, we do to seem to some are we do sometimes end up simplifying gender roles down to simplistic things. That's like if a girl asked the dude, you know, wrestling or basketball or something like that. You know what I'm saying? I don't think a dude would get offended by that. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, you could say she's being a bit bitchy or something. The only thing that really rubbed me wrong in the video was. <clears throat> when she said uh, the whole donut thing situation, which I understand she's apologized for it, but I'm just saying it was weird to me. I'm not offended. I'm not proud to be an American. I just live here. That's it. Um, that's how I feel when it comes to the whole American shit. You know what I'm saying? Um, and we have a clown in the chair who is doing shit right now who does no, no. So I, I just, no. That's not one of those types of people I am, but I'm just saying it felt weird that watching that, it felt weird. But nonetheless, um, especially if she claims to be an Italian-American. That's very weird. But nonetheless, um, overall, so yeah, overall from that video, you know, I don't see none of those as thug moments, quote-unquote. Uh, but you can wear that, you know what I'm saying? When you're a white artist, you can wear those, those thug moments and those savage moments. You know what I'm saying? It's cute on them, right? So nonetheless, um, I digress there. But um, all of this, you know, to bring this all full circle... You know, we need to talk about having respected spaces. <clears throat> and we need to set respected spaces as black people. That's where the issue is coming in. That's why you have these Miley Cyrus situations, these Justin Bieber situations. Not only do you have white people cheering them on when they want to be edgy and this and the other, but you have us, you know. we You got us putting them on trap beat songs, and now they rapping, and we writing verses for them and shit. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like at the end of the day, while I do have, you know, like we have the Tina Marie's, 
We have the John B's. You know, you have your exceptions to the in within the respective spaces. But you know, it's certain people like the Mariah Lynn's. The whole thing with her using the N-word and then the black dude coming out and defending her, talking about some, she's Hispanic, though. And then when you look it up, she's half Puerto Rican, half Italian, which, you know, to be honest, he sounds stupid. I still want to punch him to this day for saying that shit. But I also know that we as a people have tried to make the the black and brown distinction or the black and black, the line between black and brown the same. You know, when at the end of the day, no, Hispanics do not go through the same struggles that black people do. They are second in line. I will say that. They are second in line when it comes to racism and all that shit. But they don't go through the same, the exact same shit that we go through. So that's not true. And we need to stop doing that. And we need to stop, you know what I'm saying, trying to put them in the same spaces as us. Especially at the end of the day, as we seen by, from last year with Amara La Negra, you know what I'm saying? <coughs> and even times certain, car, certain times Cardi B has said, you know, some problematic shit. It's been made abundantly clear that a lot of Hispanics happen to be Afro-Hispanic or Afro-Latin, and they don't want to claim that. You know what I'm saying? So we're trying to put them in the same struggle box as us, and they don't even want to be in it in the first place. You know what I'm saying? Or they are black, but they don't want to own it. You know what I'm saying? And that's probably happening in every instance. You know, I'm sure there are black Italians, black, black everything. You know what I'm saying? Black is diverse. But with that being said, we're trying to sit here and own some people that who actually are Afro-Latin and don't want to even own that shit. You know what I'm saying? So we've done some some bad, you know, jobs in keeping our respective spaces respective to us, too. You know what I'm saying? And you have to the thing about it is when you realize the problem, you know, what I'm saying we need to be re reactive, proactive. When you realize the problem, you nip it in the bud. You know what I'm saying? Like, for instance, that's why I am how I am. Like, for instance, um, this is why um, I have one of my main points written down as respective spaces, why they are necessary. Um, if y'all have even, if any of y'all have watched the show Girlfriends, my girlfriend. Okay, I had to do that like that because I'm sick. So don't be talking about how my tone was. I don't want to hear shit. Shut up. <laughs> but um, I ended up seeing the episode the other day <clears throat> where the white girl who is, the adopted sister, I guess, of one of the girls, she ended up, um, they were in the hair salon and they were singing, um, I can't, damn, I can't remember the song and it's sad, but nonetheless, it's sad that I can't remember the song because this is the song that, damn, goddamn. Nonetheless, she used the N word. The song was, they were all in the salon, they were singing a song, this, that, and the other, and she was using the N word and she ended up using the N word. And then, of course, they wanted to kick her ass out. And the girl, she was talking to the girl. She's like, it's not no big deal. You know, it's a part of hip hop culture. And that, this, and the other. And this is why I say there are respective spaces, why, why they are necessary. You know, in the first place, you know, at the end of the day, she said that shit on her own. So I'm not going to sit here and blame nobody for that. But if you watch throughout the episode, you know, she's trying to be hip, down, this, that, and the other. And then in the end, she claims that she did that to... You know, uh, back then it was a sitcom world, so you could tie everything with a nice bow. She claimed that she acted, quote unquote, black to make her sister feel fit in with the, with the white family. But you know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, they tied it in with a nice little sitcom bow. But now if that would have come out an episode like that, it would probably be some outrage because that was, full of, that was some bullshit. But nonetheless, all right, you got this white girl in the salon saying the N-word. For one, you're doing her hair. You're cornrowing her hair. If I'm not mistaken, she was getting some cornrows put in her head or something. You know what I'm saying? And this is why I, myself, I don't give leeway into our culture. I don't give black, white people, lee, white people leeway into our culture. The cornrows, <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? I, and I've said this before in a, um, a past video. You know, it's one thing if you go to Bahamas and you get your hair done, you know what I'm saying, there, and then you get it taken out. Or you after a couple weeks, that's one thing. If you go to the Bahamas, they braid your hair, or whatever the situation is. You go to Jamaica, they braid your whatever. That's one thing. You're on vacation. That's okay. But a white girl just traditionally wearing cornrows, you know, or the little the the white girls who wrestle, you know, if you got to put your hair up, you don't want to get. Your, that's one thing. You know what I'm saying? But to just traditionally wear cornrows or white girls with box braids, just for no reason. No, I I I'm not into that shit. I'm not friends with white people who are like that or into that. You know what I'm saying? I'm friends with white people who kick stay, they stay in their respective spaces and they don't, you know what I'm saying, violate. They don't do cultural violations, you know what I'm saying, or appropriation, none of that shit. You know what I'm saying? 
<clears throat> and when she first showed up, you know, okay, she's doing all this extra shit. The girls, you know what I'm saying, they're, uh, you know, they're like, I like you, and da-da-da. So you've made her feel comfortable, you know what I'm saying? And then you're doing her hair in the salon, you know what I'm saying? Then you got this music on with the N-word all throughout it, you know what I'm saying? So what did you expect to to happen, you know what I'm saying? And we do kind of need to take some accountability for that. We're allowing white people in our respective spaces, and we're not setting boundaries. So when you sit there, you cornrow the white girl's hair, you know, you can only expect for so long before she thinks she bold enough, get, get bold enough to use the N-word. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> that was an example I wanted to use. But, you know, that's why I just, I'm very, you know, I, I keep them at a arm's distance. White people, I keep them at an arm's distance. I don't have many white friends, not gonna lie. And... You know what I'm saying? That Miley Cyrus bug, it sits in the back burner of my mind. You know what I'm saying? Anytime one of them decides they want to rap or, you know, be a, uh, urban or whatever the shit. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I'm saying, though. We have to take responsibility for the, the, the ways that we've made them feel open to do that, too. It's great that everybody's getting, you know, quote unquote woke and this, that, and the third now. But, you know what I'm saying? Things didn't just start happening now. They've been in motion and set in motion. And we need to get to a point to where we're able to nip stuff in the bud. You know what I'm saying? And um, it's another thing that I don't understand about the respective spaces is why we are expected to keep ours open to everyone <coughs> when in light of even recent situations, like K. Michelle trying to break into country music, you know, or Beyonce performing at the CMAs. You know what I'm saying? Did you see all the backlash from those quote-unquote conservative, quote-unquote, right, aka, AKA racist? Um, those racist country people, you know, all the backlash that she got when she performed at CMAs, you know what I'm saying? These are the same people who would say it's 2018 or it's 2019, there's no such thing as racism, but back just three years ago in 2016, when Beyonce was performing with the Dixie Chicks, it was a problem, right? You know what I'm saying? And I'd be damned if anybody sit there and try to say it's any other reason than because she's black. You know, I don't want to hear no shit about she's a pop star. She doesn't know the country struggle. Bitch, there is no country struggle. Y'all sit there and... Y'all sit there and think about beer and love and drugs. Is it? I'm sorry. I'm just going to be honest. You know what I'm saying? But <clears throat> that's all I've heard from country music. Heartbreak, love, beer, fucking in the backseat of the truck. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's like, you know what I'm saying? But she don't know that country struggle, right? That's the reason why she can't be a country or do a country song. Or the reason why when she submits the song to the Grammys, it doesn't get or it gets turned down as a country song. That's the reason, right? because she don't know the country struggle. You know what I'm saying? So people are being full of shit. You know what I'm saying? Or like when they casted the black girl, um, Anna Diop, the black lady, the black woman as Starfire for the new Titans um, show. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know what I'm saying? Or even if you go venture out further on, you know, um, there are places within the anime world where black people can't feel comfortable. There are places within every place and within every aspect of the world you know what I'm saying, where white people feel perfectly safe to function, and this, that, and the third, and we are told we can't be here, this is not our shit, da-da-da-da, this, that, and the other. I don't understand why we can't be the same way then, if that's the case. And for some things, I do feel that's necessary, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to see just anybody walking around with the, the red diamond or the red dot on their head if you're not Indian, you know what I'm saying? Like, I would be offended by that, you know what I'm saying? And I'm not even necessary, well, I mean, to be honest, I ain't taking that ancestry uh, test yet, so I don't know what the hell I am. But I'm not traditionally Hindu, Indian, none of that shit. So I would feel, you know what I'm saying, some type of way seeing that. So, they, and that's the thing, though. They don't want to do that. They want to co consistently use our shit, our culture, and this, any other. And I feel like at the end of the day, <clears throat> we need to start calling shit out. Calling shit what it is. And, you know what I'm saying, keeping these respective spaces to ourselves. Stop allowing people, stop trying to invite people to the cookout. That's so annoying. That's one of the most annoying things. I seen this one meme the other day or somebody typed a post or something and said, y'all done invited so many white people to the cookout, it's now a barbecue. Like, stop doing this shit. And it just made me laugh. It's so fucking sad, the mentality that we have when we try to include everybody. It's not necessary. You can have mutual respect for people without inviting them to your shit. You know what I'm saying? And that's where we need to get to as a person, because that's how you have problems like Ariana Grande and Miley Cyrus and Justin Bieber pop up. You know what I'm saying? So 
overall, uh, I see the video is approaching 25 minutes. That's not too damn long. I just wanted to get out what I had to say on this situation. You know what I'm saying? So as far as I'm concerned, Ariana Grande is trying to um, uh, personify blackface. For what reason? I don't know why, because regardless, her music is going to sell. I don't understand it. <coughs> um, but I do feel like black people should not be supporting this. They should not support Seven Rings. You know what I'm saying? If you truly claim to be black and woke or this, that, and the third, you know what I'm saying, then that isn't where your support should be at. It shouldn't be with her. It shouldn't be with Miley Cyrus. It shouldn't be with Justin Bieber. It shouldn't be with Iggy. You know what I'm saying? This bullshit is getting out of hand and it's annoying. But with that being said, y'all, let me know what y'all think down below. Um, and I will catch y'all on the next video. Peace.